We're now in the fifth video in this um, fluid tutorial series and we're ready to start looking at the motion of the fluid. In order to do that I've created three videos to illustrate the difference in some of the settings and the difference between the first two videos is kind of subtle and not terribly pronounced so we're going to need to somewhat know what to look for so we'll start off with the settings that affect the motion of the fluid there's a few settings that will do that the first notable one is called time and it's on the first tab of the domain settings it has a start time by default of zero seconds and that one I leave alone as I understand what this will do is if I was to set it forward my water simulation would start later in in the simulation um, or in other words I believe that the cube will already have started to fall down when when the video starts to uh, show the water simulation and I've not actually experimented with this one to know exactly how that works or what that does and it's one that I just leave at zero myself and the end time is by default set to 0 0.3 and the end time is calibrated in seconds so this would mean that we have 0.3 of a second worth of water simulation being generated and as mentioned earlier in this series by default um, our render will be 250 frames and the same as our bake is 250 frames cycling at 25 frames a second and the math works out is that we're generating 10 seconds of video but with that 10 seconds of video um, the first video will reflect a time lapse where 0.3 of a second is being spanned over a 10 second time the second setting for affecting the motion of the fluid is called real world size and this field is calibrated in meters and the first video will reflect a default size of 0 0.03 meters and that would translate as three centimeters and I'm not perfectly clear on exactly what the real world size means and my assumption is because it's applied to the domain object is that it's saying that the domain is three centimeters long but I could be mistaken in this and I base that on what I see I haven't been able to find any documentation specifically saying three centimeters is the size of the domain or three centimeters is the size of this fluid so that isn't exactly clear to me and a couple other settings that will affect fluid motion is the gravity of course which I personally leave at default and the viscosity which I also will leave at default that water so I'm going to go over and we'll have a look at the first video and I'll come back with the second blend loaded in and some new settings into these uh, different variables. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, here's my second blend file. Um, it's good to note with that video and the video from this blend file is that it's really the first seconds of the video that count. Um, when the fluid drops down, and I'll frame through that, is this is the part that counts up to here. And after the fluid is squashed flat, I kind of think that the mathematics of the fluid sim simulation break down a bit because afterwards it just really starts hopping around on the floor and doesn't look very natural at all and it doesn't look very natural squashed thin like that at pretty much any setting that I've tried. 
So that's worth noting. Uh, we're really looking at the initial splashdown of that cube and the way that it acts. In this blend file and the coming video will represent 10 seconds of fluid simulation. I've entered the value of 10 into the end time value. So now there's no time lapse with this fluid simulation. And in the advanced tab, I've also altered the real world size. And instead of the three centimeter size from the first video, this real world size will represent 10 meters. So I believe that that means that the floor of the simulation, which matches the size of the domain, is actually 10 meters. So we'll cut over to that video and then I'll come back with my third blend file. So as I mentioned, the difference in the two videos is quite subtle and these are really subtle differences and it's really hard to tell from just that single splash exactly what's going on. So I've created this third simulation in which I've placed the fluid inside of an invisible tank and the tank will contain the fluid and basically show more of a surface motion without the fluid going and being squashed overly thin and I think that this simulation better represents the fluid sim in, in the software but it really depends on your uses also and in this video I'm also using a start time of zero an end time of 10 seconds and a real world size of 10 meters so I'm using maximum size settings and having no time lapse to the to the sequence so we'll go over and have a look at that video now and I'll come back with some final words So that's about it. Um, I've pretty much exhausted what I can uh, offer on uh, fluid simulation and in that last video with uh, waves floating around in the tank um, a lot of control can be taken over that motion by adjusting the, the time setting for for the simulation um, introducing a uh, time lapse to that can also change that motion a lot and playing around with the size and time will will find as good of a setting as you can with the software it is a fluid simulation and presently to my knowledge um, there is no perfect fluid simulation and it's never going to look completely perfect. Um, my understanding is that that's something that is actually quite difficult to do in a computer. So that's what we have here and pretty much all that I have to offer. I'm going to come back with maybe one or two more videos and look over the original blend file and say a little bit about what I did in that. Uh, what I think worked and what I think really didn't work that good. So I'll come back with with that and I hope somebody's found this small tutorial to be useful to them. So I'll see you in the next video.